Decision analysis provides a structured, efficient way to help people recognize the complexity, to recognize the probabilities, and to deal with it. So, uh, what are the general features of this method? First of all, it offers a simple way of defining the choices. Indeed, it assumes that everything is a discrete choice, that it's either yes, no, or yes, somewhat, a lot, maybe, not at all, but it has discrete, it, it forces you to think in terms of discrete choices, not a continuum. It also uh, enables you, but generally impels you, to look over several periods. That is, it's not just what you do in the first period, but then what you do. Um, just like going to uh, uh, a course at MIT, you have your choice of first semester courses and the choices you make then enable you to do certain things or prevent you from doing other things because you didn't take the prerequisite course and so forth so that you want to think about over several periods. The third element, which is key to the whole reason we've been discussing it, is because it deals with uncertainties. Um, and it is also a standardized method. So there are tools available to uh, do this, to do decision analysis. And uh, so it's, it's, if you are into decision analysis, there are a lot of other people who do it the same way. They do it in a standard way. So it's a, it's a structured process. It's, a, it's like Excel, it provides a widespread language to think about certain things. And finally, um, which is uh, which I think is relevant here is that it can include your not just a numerical result in terms of the income that may be or the present value, but also can deal with uh, risk aversions, your consumer satisfaction, some kind of notion of utility. We'll talk more about that in a in a later session. Uh, in this in the half semester course, but for the moment, uh, it allows you to say, well, yeah, we could have um, on average our outcome is good, but the bad outcome is I really don't like it at all. Um, if I'm, for example, if I'm saving for my pension, uh, I don't just will think on average I might have a million dollars to retire on, but it makes a great deal of difference for me if it, that million is. Uh, for an extreme, it's either two million or nothing. That'd be an average of a million. But if I had nothing, I'd be feeling very unhappy about my retirement. And so that I would uh, wait against that possibility. So it, can, it allows you to think about utility assessment. Now, all right. The central element of uh, the decision analysis is the decision tree. It shows the choices over several period. And it has basically a four outcomes, uh, four elements. It has the choices, the uh, structure, the way you draw it. Um, it has the choices and the possible outcomes. I'll show you those in a moment. And secondly, it has data, the data both about uncertainties that may occur and the value of the outcomes. So four elements, choices and out the structure and the data. So here is a structure. So it's a, basically it's a disciplined way of present alternatives. And it has two um, elements. It has the decision points. So over on the left-hand side here, we have, I'm starting and I have a choice to make. And in this, I'm going to have a very simple case just to, illustrate it, I can either do choice one or choice two. I have these two branches. Of course, I could have five or six, but or I have a choice. Then having done something, say uh, I decided to take um, whatever, I decided to build a plant somewhere, that then I have a result, a chance outcome uh, that it performed well, not so well, it was a disaster, whatever it might be. I have possible outcomes. And for each uh, of the uh, <coughs> choices, typically known as a branch, 
um, you'll have a possible outcomes and they will lead you to another place where you say, all right, I built this plant, it was a success, now do I build them some more or uh, stay put? Or I built this plant, it was a failure, I can now decide to sell it or re not renovate it, whatever. So uh, we got sequences, decision, chance, decision, uh, chance, the, is the basic structure of this. Um, now, the data then is all right. So I have elements about the outcome. So given all this, I've made a decision. Uh, I, I observe what happened. I made another decision. I observe what happens. And I have an outcome one, outcome two. And in this particular case, where I have two choices, two outcomes at each stage, I have in this two very simple two-stage process, I have... Uh, 16 outcomes. Now, you might ask, well, where is the decision tree? Well, basically you gotta think that this tree is lying on its side and that this is the root here and the branches go up and leaves and so forth. And what I invite you to consider first of all here is when does this decision tree become a messy bush? Because realize that I've only had two choices, two decisions here. I could have had five and I could have five outcomes and now I'm going to have uh, 25 and I repeat this and I'm going to have 25 squared and I have 600 some outcomes, etc. It can really easily get very complicated um, when I haven't uh, looked at a particularly difficult problem. So for example, if I were trying to represent a game of chess here and I could move um, basically something like uh, eight, 10, 10 moves at the beginning with my pawns and uh, my castle, uh, my rooks, I would have uh, 10 possible choices or 12 possible choices here. And then I could have what my opponent does and uh, a realistic problem can explode on you. So one of the issues here, again, back to my emphasis at the beginning, or my remark at the beginning, is that decision analysis is good for simple problems. For complicated problems, it just gets too messy. 